What's up everybody, it's Tony with Alternative Living Spaces, and right now you're joining me behind the scenes as we're working through six shipping containers. They're gonna be going to the largest container home community in Oklahoma, and on this episode, we'll be breaking down with you exactly how we're doing our electrical. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. All right, so we're inside of a container right now where the electrical is getting done. Uh, we got John in the back right here, just crushing it, man, getting all the wires installed. So he's the real expert here, so anytime I say something wrong, I'm gonna need John to interrupt me. But uh, basically we, with this unit, because we did the flat studs, we had to use shallow boxes. So we only had one and a half inches of space here. A traditional box would have, you know, protruded way past our finished shiplap. That's not gonna work. So uh, we have the shallow boxes installed here and they added this as well to offset these Romex lines. The goal being that if someone's gonna nail in the shiplap here down the road, they don't want them hitting a the knot and then that, that, that nail shooting into one of these lines. And that's a really bad issue after this is completely finished. So got these spaced out. Everything runs up and runs all the way to the very back of the container. That's where our main breaker box is gonna be. So on this one, we have a 200 amp panel. Uh, it's, it's gonna be powering both this bottom container and an upper 20 foot container that goes up there as well. So I uh, just kind of want to walk us through in general some of the things that are uh, going on at this electrical phase. We do have our control cable ran here for the HVAC fan that's gonna get mounted here. So he pre-ran that since the condenser's on the back end. And you know, for, for us, this is gonna be the first space you walk into. It's the living room. You'll have your light switches right here. We have outlets for the TV. Uh, there's gonna be a desk space here. And so we have our outlets here. And then this is our kitchen area. Now in the kitchen, we have several dedicated circuits. One is gonna be for the stove top down here. Another one we have for the fridge, another dedicated circuit for the microwave. And then for the outlets, depending on what you're gonna need to power, some of those may be on the same circuit or you may want them individually dedicated as well. Now in this unit, most of the electrical had to be dropped in from the ceiling and come down. In more traditional framing applications, you can go through the studs when you're running electrical. But as you can see here, if we drill the hole in these one and a half inch studs, there's almost no stud left. So uh, most of the electrical gets dropped in. And then like I shared, everything's gonna run to the back here. You can see here on the exterior, the panel is going to be on this other side. So we did have to frame this wall out a little bit thicker so that all of these wires can come down and safely exit into that exterior panel. Now I want to walk you through the process of electrical. So just starting from the very initial stages, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to map out your electrical within your container. This is where you're identifying what areas you need outlets, what areas you need switches, what areas you need lights, and all the other things and elements that are involved in the electrical process. Once you have a good map laid out, you can go ahead and go into your container and begin to mark where those outlets and where those switches are gonna go. From there, your next step is gonna be installing your receptacle boxes. As I showed you, we used shallow boxes. Now that may not be what you use in yours. If you're framing it out with traditional metal studs or wood framing, uh, you're gonna just go with a traditional box. It's gonna be a little bit deeper. Uh, you'll wanna start installing those in all of the proper locations. From there, you're then gonna transition to wiring up your container. As you saw on the one that we did, there was wires everywhere. That's the process that we're in as of today. And so we have 12-2 wire running to majority of our outlets and switches. Uh, and then we have 14-2 wire running to our lighting and 14-3 wire to our smoke detectors. Now, when you're navigating electrical, we talked briefly about circuits and different things on different circuits or on a dedicated circuit. Now, I want you to get a little bit of an understanding of this, and I'm gonna show you an example. This is just a panel right here. This isn't one that we're using in these containers, but just wanna give you an idea. So. Uh, we got a 200 amp panel, home line panel here. Essentially all the circuits are gonna be going right here in these locations. And I think this panel takes a total of 40 breakers. Now, some of the things that you're gonna be installing into your container home are gonna take a lot more power than other things. For example, things that don't take a lot of power are things like lights. They, take a, they, they run off a very small amount of wattage, very minimal amperage taken. So you can run a lot of, uh, a lot of lights on one single circuit. There are other things that take a lot more power that when you're mapping out not only your interior layout of your electrical, but your actual panel layout, you wanna keep this in mind. A couple of those things, number one is gonna be your water heater. Uh, anything that requires heat typically requires a lot of power. So water heaters, hot plates, microwaves, maybe heating elements in general like a heater or an HVAC system, 
are the, are the items in particular that are gonna take up a lot of power and therefore may need to either be on a dedicated circuit or be on a dedicated circuit, but they may require multiple breakers. Maybe it's not a 15 amp breaker or a 20 amp breaker, but on some of these we have double pole 40s. Uh, and a good example of that is our water heater. So our water heater actually runs at about 12,000 watts they recommend it having a dedicated 100 amps just for the water heater. It's a tankless on-demand water heater and it just consumes a lot of power, especially since it's running a two-story home. So for something like that, it's gonna take multiple slots within this panel. Uh, another thing would be your HVAC unit. The one that we're running is actually gonna power multiple fan heads on the interior. And because of that, it's not a standard 110 type of connection, but it's gonna require 220 volts. And for that reason, it's also gonna take up multiple sections on this breaker box. Lastly, just to kind of wrap up some of these thoughts, if you're in the kitchen, like for example, in our kitchen, we already know the owner is gonna have a coffee machine plugged into one of those outlets. So we just made it a dedicated outlet. He may have a blender plugged into another one. We're gonna make it a dedicated outlet. And what that's gonna prevent is from you being in the kitchen, like you've probably had this experience before, and you're running your toaster, and you go ahead and turn on your coffee machine and a breaker pops. Or you're running your air fryer, and you, you, you run in something else that requires a lot of power, and all of a sudden the breaker pops. We don't want that happening. So we just have individual breakers on those. And anything in a bathroom or a kitchen does need to be GFCI protected. This is gonna make sure that if at any point water gets on that outlet, it's automatically gonna pop and kill that circuit preventing any kind of potential electrical fire. Now, the last few things to keep in mind, uh, when you do have wires running through your studs, you are gonna wanna add nail plates over where the wires run. That's gonna help prevent an issue down the road. If someone that you either sell the home to or someone that you live with decides to start screwing into their walls, they know when they're hitting an area where there's an electrical wire. Uh, you may need to consider also running other types of wires at this point. For example, maybe you need an ethernet cable ran or some type of cable for your television or your internet. Whatever cables need to be ran and you want in your walls need to happen at this stage. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as we broke down electrical inside of a shipping container home. If you want more information on how to build your own shipping container home, I have a free gift for you. It's linked in the description below. It's an hour long training where I'm revealing to you some of the biggest secrets we've learned in the industry after over eight years and a 150 builds. You definitely want to check that out and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.